Welcome to the Sent from Disneyland podcast. Here age relives fond memories of the past. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. On this episode, we'll take a journey into the past and explore Disneyland and Disneyland history with mementos, snapshots, and postcards sent from Disneyland from 1955 to the present. Today I'm starting off by thanking my patrons from Patreon.com. You can join and receive mail from my desk or from my Disneyland trips. Special thanks to Random Olive, the first patron to this podcast, and to the e-ticket patrons to Nia, Eric Daniels, Joe Gamble, Scott Booker, Monica Seats Vega, Russ Romano, Michael and Christina Cross, Scott Cagle, and Sheila Harry. See ticket patrons serious inquiries only, Debbie Weinstein, Jennifer Schneep, Grace Coat, Ben and Noel Bruning, Patty Wollen, Angela Reynolds, and Aaron Moran. B ticket patrons, the Disney Rewind Podcast, Jeff and Paige Orton, and Joshua, and Exorable Tosh Bell. And the A ticket patrons, Elise Sharp, Zealot Infinity, Alexis Robles, Maggie and Henry Byers, Angel Nablah, and and the All Aboard Podcast. You can also sign up for my new newsletter for a chance to get some postcards delivered by the USPS to your mailbox. I am your host, your post host, Clocky. And today, we have two postcards sent from Disneyland. The front of our first postcard has an image of Sleeping Beauty Castle. You can see guests walking in and out of the castle, and on the right, you can see the red motor car pulling up to the curb. On the back, it reads, Sleeping Beauty's Castle. Two worlds of excitement come together. A chugging horseless carriage arrives at the end of Main Street, USA, to dispatch guests bound for Sleeping Beauty's Castle. Gateway to Fantasyland. World of dreams come true. It's postmarked June 23, 1971, with a Vista cancel and a deep claret 8-cent Eisenhower postage stamp, Scott number 1395. I assume they visit the park on Friday, June 18, 1971, when park hours were from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. The weather was a high of 77 and a low of 60. It's addressed to a Mr. and Mrs. Millard Anderson of Rossburg, Washington. It reads, San Diego. Hi. Been having fun seeing the sights. Been to Disneyland, Tijuana, San Diego, and SeaWorld, etc. Spent this weekend visiting friends in San Diego, waiting for Dan at the moment at the State Patrol office. Some lady hit us Saturday on the freeway. She had no insurance. Not much damage, but a shame it had to happen. Really hot down here. Love, the Kirklands. The Kirklands might have been able to catch a performance by the Disneyland All-American College Band. Although I couldn't find an exact date when the band first performed, the Disneyland All-American College Band program started in 1971 in Disneyland, and a Walt Disney World version debuted in 1972. The first version of the band only played two weeks in the park. Following that, the program grew to perform 11 weeks, starting in mid-June and running through most of August. Every year, 300 college students would apply for the band and would be dwindled down to 21 musicians from colleges around the United States. The first band leader was Ron Logan, who began his career with Disney as a trumpet player in the late 60s. His first solo was performing the trumpet fanfare solo for the 1968 Candlelight Processional with guest narrator Henry Fonda. He was the director of bands and jazz studies at the nearby Long Beach City College from 1965 to 1968. He started the Disneyland All-American College Band and was the director for the first few years. Ron would eventually work full-time for the Disney parks in the late 70s, working in entertainment management for Walt Disney World, Disneyland, all Disney parks, and retired in 2001 as the executive vice president and executive producer for Walt Disney Entertainment. Ron passed away last year at the age of 84. He was named a Disney legend in 2007 and has a window on Main Street USA in the Magic Kingdom in Florida, which reads, Ron Logan, leading the band into the next century. Great news, Enfield Post is back up on Etsy. Grabbing some vintage stamps is a great way to plus your mail. Whether you're trying to match the color of your postcard or envelope, or adding a theme stamp to the back of your mail, be sure to check out Enfield Post. You can head over to EnfieldPost.com and explore all the different vintage stamps you can use on your next card or letter. That's E-N-F-I-E-L-D. P-O-S-T on Instagram and EnfieldPost.com for your wedding and vintage postage needs. Enfield Post is the official postage stamp sponsor of the Sent from Disneyland podcast.
The front of our next postcard has the Matterhorn. You can see the Skyway gondolas going in and out of the mountain, and monorail yellow passing above the submarine voyage entrance. On the back it reads, Matterhorn Mountain. Skyway buckets wing high above Tomorrowland on a journey through Matterhorn Mountain to Fantasyland. Sleek monorail trains offer still another type of sky cruise, a swift, silent journey over the winding highway in the sky. It's postmarked April 24, 1975, with a U.S. Postal Service cancel and a black-and-white 8-cent Eisenhower postage stamp, Scott number 1394. I assume they visited the park on Sunday, April 20, 1975, when park hours were from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. The weather was a high of 72 and a low of 48. It's addressed to a Mr. and Mrs. Z. Flaum of Rochester, New York. It reads, Hi, this is one of the attractions that Disney World doesn't have. It's a scary ride. Everything has been great so far. Sunny weather and moderate temperature. Right now we are having lunch in Big Sur, California, after one and a half days driving up the coast. San Francisco tomorrow night. Love, Alice and Roger. In 2005, Disneyland's 50th anniversary, there was a gathering of Disneyland All-American College Band members from the first 35 years. This reunion also marked the retirement of Dr. Art Bartner, the second and longest tenured of all the American college band directors, who ran the program from 1974 to 2005. Bartner was also the director of the Spirit of Troy, the University of Southern California marching band from 1970 until he retired in 2020. A second reunion took place in 2010 for the band's 40th season, and a third took place in 2015. These reunions included over 100 alumni playing with the current band for the one day. Looking at an article from 2017, the University of North Texas has had the most All-American Band member alumni with 68. The next highest number is 37 from USC, and the third is Indiana University with 30 alumni. The band did have a name change from 1998 to 2002. It was known as... It was known as the Collegiate All-Star Band. The Disney World program stopped in 2000 and had a five-person version of the program for one year in 2001. Disneyland's All-American College Band, which took a hiatus in 2020 and 2021, came back in 2022 for its 50th, but recently announced it would not return for summer of 2023. The future of the band is currently unknown. Reading through articles about band member experiences, it's clear that the band was more than just fun entertainment. It also included education for members to learn about music careers, arranging, composing, producing, and recording. This incoming postcard is sponsored by the Art Throwdown. Art Throwdown, or ATD, is an online craft hour on Instagram, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Be sure to check out Monday's ATD, which is usually hosted by a paper artist, Russ Romano. I see many amazing art projects, learned about awesome postmarks, postage stamp history, and a lot more on different episodes. It's great to stop in for an hour to watch someone craft or design something unique. Each host brings something a little different to each show. I'll list some of the regular hosts, or you can follow Russ Romano 2021 on Instagram. The front of my incoming postcard has concept art by Mary Blair from Alice in Wonderland. You can see a row of cards lined up against a wavy hill other cards bending over to make croquet hoops, Alice looking off in the distance, and the Red Queen from behind with the black and red heart shape making up her posterior. It's postmarked twice, once with a Charlotte, North Carolina, June 2, 2023 Protect Endangered Species Cancel, and a second one hand-canceled on May 23, 2023 with the North Carolina NPF Station Cancel, including a Charlotte skyline in a crown shape image cache, and a Sailboat Forever postcard postage stamp, Scott number 5748A. It reads, 52523. Hi Clocky, I like these concept art drawings. The concept of the Queen of Hearts is funny here, not flattering. Baby got back. Happy summer, Greg. Thank you so much for the postcard, Greg. I always love the exaggeration used for early Disney concept artwork. The heart that makes the queen's rear end was probably a big influence on her overall design, especially when you think about the Cheshire Cat sitting on it towards the end of the movie. Greg's postcards always remind me to go out and find interesting hand cancels. The Charlotte Skyline stamp is amazing and really comes in clear on the paper back side of the Disney concept art postcards. Thanks for listening to Sent from Disneyland. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and tell your friends. 
It would be awesome to share your favorite episode. There are over 100 episodes to choose from. It would also help to leave a five-star rating and comment on whatever podcast platform you use. If you'd like to support the show financially, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sentfromdisneyland. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at sentfromdisneyland or on Twitter at sentfromdisney. For questions and comments, send me a postcard address to sent from Disneyland, P.O. Box 44, Hood, California, 95639. This podcast is not affiliated with Disney, the United States Postal Service, or any post office or Disney properties. Opinions expressed on this podcast belong to its host and guests of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. 